It's GED question of the daytime, and we've got here a little something that you should be able to do without a calculator for sure. So let's take a look. It says simplify, and we've been given this exponential expression here. Um, it's, it's that says four to the eighth power over four to the fourth power. Um, four to the eighth power over four to the fourth power, and um, we see some little directions here. Leave your answer in exponential form. Leave your answer in exponential form. Now, there's really not one right way to go uh, about this problem. As with all of math, there's more than one way I could attack this. If you have your rules of exponents memorized, you're a lucky snot because you just automatically know where, where what this is. But for the rest of us who forget our rules of exponents, we might not know where they come from. I think the easiest way to um, think about problems like this is to examine these numbers in expanded form. Remember that any exponential expression like 4 to the 8th power can be re rewritten in expanded form, rewritten as repeated multiplication. Four to the eighth power literally means the number four multiplying by itself eight times. Not adding, but multiplying by itself eight times. It's a huge number. If I were to actually try to multiply this out, I would be a miserable woman. Um, four times four is already 16, and I have all these other fours. I, if I keep multiplying, it's gonna get huge. But what I wanna do actually is write it out in expanded form so I can point something out to you. Same thing with four to the fourth, fourth power. What does that mean? It means the number four multiplying by itself four times. And because I like to make a fool out of myself on Facebook by having wrong answers, I'm just going to count my fours here. So up top I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. And down below I have one, two, three, four. Perfect. And so all I've done here is trade out one form of another, a number for another. And I just wanted to do this so you could see really quickly what happens. Uh, come over here real quick with me and let's think about when you have the number 4 over 4. Remember that a fraction bar literally means divide. So 4 over 4 means 4 divided by 4. Well, you and I know that if I took 4 and divided by the same number 4, I would get right back to that kind of starting point of multiplication and division the uh, multiplicative identity, the number one. Uh, it's kind of like the way zero works in addition where zero doesn't do anything. One is that way in multiplication and division. It just is kind of a useless number that makes no changes. It's the identity, okay? So if I have all these fours up on the top and these fours on the bottom, what I want you to realize, if, if I took this four and divided by four, I would end up with just a one which doesn't do anything in the process of multiplication and division. And so it just kind of like goes away. It's, it's useless, it's not very helpful. So I cancel a four with a four here. And I can cancel this four with this four, this four with this four, and this four with this four. Um, maybe another better way for you to think about it is um, those numbers up top are multiplying, those numbers below are dividing. So multiplying and dividing by the same number cancels out since those are inverses. Either way that you think of it, the fact of the matter is when you have a 4 on the top of a fraction and a 4 on the bottom of a fraction of that common factor, uh, they are not important. They cancel out. And so notice what I'm left with here. I have 4s. I have 4s. And how many 4s do I have multiplying? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 to the fourth power. I have 4 4s left multiplying. So B is my correct answer. Now, for those of you who've been in higher math classes before, you know that this rule has a name. It's known as the quotient rule. You will have to memorize these in your college algebra class. I just showed you where the quotient rule came from and why it works. But at some point in your career, you are going to have to memorize that when dividing like bases. What am I talking about? What are these like bases I'm talking about? Well, both of these exponential expressions had a base of four. The number with the feet on the floor is the base, the big number, another way people talk about it. So that's a, the base of four and the base of four. So they're like, they're the same number. So when dividing like bases, you say, Kate, you're not dividing, yes I am, a fraction bar means divide. So here I am dividing these two like bases. All you do is subtract exponents. 
So I had an eight up on the top and a four on the bottom. Eight minus four is four. Okay, so a lot of people would teach this shortcut rule and um, I'll just show you like an example problem. Like if you had x to the 27th uh, power over x to the 21st power, yes. Could I write out x 27 times? Yes. And write out x 21 times? Absolutely. And then do all the canceling? I sure could. But what would happen after I did all the canceling? Well, out of my 27 x's on top, 21 would cancel. So I would still have x's left, but how many? I would have the, whoops, from the original 27, I would take away the 21 that canceled, and I would have six x's left. Okay, so that is known as the quotient rule, and it is a perfectly legit way to solve this problem. But if you can't remember your quotient rule, again, just write it out in expanded form, and you'll always see what happens. Okay, great. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments.